Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel. Um, today we're doing something a little bit different. I'm going to try making some long form content on the channel. I don't know um, how often or how frequently they'll be being uploaded, but I do want to do some longer videos in addition to the daily uploads. And the daily uploads won't stop or anything. I really enjoy doing those. So um, on days that these longer form videos get posted, uh, there'll be two videos posted, a short video and the long form video. Um, in any case, today we're doing a tier list for all the heroes. Uh, now, for those of you who don't know what a tier list is, um, essentially, this website allows you to, you know, put images into tiers. And today we're using uh, the site to, well, you know, I've kind of already explained it, <laughs> to put the heroes in tiers. Now, I do want to, you know, express that Everything in this video is my opinion. Um, I'm not very plugged into the Storbit Brawl meta, like, overall. I post on the subreddit sometimes, but I'm intentionally not, like, researching and deep diving and trying to min-max everything, right? Like, so, everything that's said in this video is mostly going to be uh, my opinion from my experience as someone who plays between three and 4,000 rank um, Storbit Brawl. So let's go ahead and get started. I guess we'll just go in the order that um, these are already in. So we're gonna start with beauty. Now, I like beauty. However, I'm not like, so after her, her uh, update, I would have put her here because I'm always excited to play her. And she, she I, I thought she was very good, however, I've played her multiple times since then, and I just don't think that she's as good as I thought she was. And over time, she's moved down to meh tier for me. C tier. Um, she's very neat. I like the way that she allows you to play with good and bad supports, and how basically she makes them all work together. She's a very unique and fun hero, but she's not one that I actually enjoy picking anymore. Um, I'll pick her sometimes, which is why she's not going and never picking, but, yeah, I, I'm kind of meh on beauty. Next is Celestial Tiger. Um, I think Tiger is also in meh. Tiger hovers between never picking and meh for me. Um, Tiger has a very strong early game, but there are very few, like, treasures that are worth duplicating in the late game that are, like, levels... Uh, two and three. So I usually avoid Tiger. In fact, I might put it down to never picking because it's just a hero that I never really want to have. Next is Charon, who honestly is also going in meh. We're starting out pretty low today. Um, I know some people are pretty high on this character. I'm just not. Uh, it takes a while to ramp up, and if you don't, like, he rewards you for buying a character and sticking with it for a long time. And there aren't very many early game characters that want that. Like, I guess um, the mage animal kind of works. Or if you can get it early, um, Wretched Mummy. But, I don't know. He's not my favorite. And I tend to avoid picking Charon. Uh, up next is... Oh man, this is really embarrassing. I forgot her name. <laughs> she used to be one of my favorite heroes to play. Um, Ivella. There we go. But, like, whenever she gave everything plus two plus one for whenever an evil, I mean, animal died, I would auto pick her. She was amazing. And then they nerfed her, and then they nerfed her again. And now at this point, I think she's just an F tier. I, I never pick her anymore. I don't think her pay, her like, ability pays off very well at all anymore. So I just avoid her uh, at all po times possible. Next is Fallen Angel, who I really like. I'm quite excited to pick Fallen Angel. Um, I think she's very strong. I think the fact that you can like gear your team to have higher toughness or higher attack, whichever one's more useful, and sometimes you can even hit the balance and get both, and just a static plus two plus two is so much stronger than what most heroes offer in the first several turns that I just think she's really amazing. Um, 
she is awesome with uh, the fairies, shoulder fairies. I love doing tree inch, uh, shoulder fairy stuff with her. And in the early game, uh, getting a Sherwood Sure Shot with a bunch of evil characters is really strong. Or the mummy is also very good with her, and I love the mummy. So yeah, Fallen Angel goes here. Next is Geppetto, who I will also put here. Uh, before his buff, I probably would have put him like in Happy or Meh, but now that he gives animals plus one plus one where the plus is equal to its level, I think that it just does so much for him. Like, it makes all future um, bear scenes better, it makes all future like power doubling and tripling effects better. It just, it does a lot. And I really, really think that Geppetto is one of the stronger characters in the game right now. Um, yeah, I just, not too much else to say. I really like Geppetto. Uh, next is Godmother. Grandmother. Yeah, Grandmother. Um, easy dream target. Uh, this isn't to say she's bad. If I had to actually place her, I'd probably put her in meh tier. But... For me, she is 100% a dream target. Um, your goal with her is to play with the mask and dream into her at like level five or six, or play as anyone else that you know kind of runs out of steam in the late game, and then move into her so you can get the, the massive buff. Used to, you got her health too, but they don't do that anymore. So yeah, definitely a dream target for me. Um, Similar with uh, the Knighthood hero. I'm forgetting her name off the top of my head. However, I, I usually, like, if I'm picking her, I'd put her here. She used to be here for me. But um, after the King Arthur nerf, she moved down to meh. And realistically, she's more of a dream target hero, in my opinion. You, like, dream into her to get the Knighthood. And then you dream out. And I think that's a pretty strong play. And it can make you very strong in the mid game. Um, but I'm going to leave her in the dream target tier. Which is not technically below never picking. It's just like a separate thing by itself. Next is Horde Dragon. Horde Dragon I'm going to put at the top of meh tier. Um, I like Horde Dragon. It's just that I have this issue with heroes that make you have to find treasures. Because sometimes you just don't find them, or the ones that you do find suck. So, like, Horde Dragon, it's just, he's just so volatile. Sometimes it'll put you up here, and sometimes it'll be down here. Like, you, you, you never know when you pick them. It just depends on, you know, how lucky you get, basically. And I don't like that a lot. I value consistency, which you can kind of see here with uh, how, where I'm putting these characters, who are both very consistent. Up next is Jack's Giant, and I'll put him in Happy Tier, B Tier, because it's not, like, exciting. Like, picking Jack's Giant is never, like, oh yeah, let's see what we can do this game. You know, it's just a solid, you know, stat-boosting character. Um, you're going to have a good early game. Very few things beat him early game. So, you know, you pick Jack's Giant and you know what you get. And I like that a lot. Um, I just don't... He's just not flashy. So he doesn't go in excited tier for me. Up next is Krampus, who... Kind of the same thing. And I'll go ahead and find Grandmother, I mean, uh, Mrs. Claus, and put her here too. Um, these heroes that just give you straight, flat stat boosts, they're good. I enjoy playing them. Um... They make your early game very interesting, and then they allow you to like dream out of them in the late game whenever the plus one plus one or plus two zero plus two isn't very relevant. And I enjoy that gameplay. I enjoy the challenge of like figuring out their early game. Um, and they're strong, right? Like a plus one plus one to your whole board is pretty good, especially in the early game. So I really do enjoy these three characters. Just. They're not as exciting or fun to me as what I would put here. You know, Geppetto has a cool mechanic that goes with him. Um, Fallen Angel makes you, like, straddle the line between good and bad, and that's a cool, like, tension throughout the whole game. And these heroes just ask you to, like, have characters, and some of them require them to be all good or all bad. So, like, I don't know. They're definitely not in there. 
I really like these characters. They're just not as exciting for me as what I would put in this tier. Up next is Loki, who I will put in exciting tier, A tier. Loki, so I know earlier I talked about how I like variant. I, I dislike variants, and Loki is kind of pure variants. However, Loki is consistently random, if that makes sense. Like, the spells you get are random, but you know that every single turn you will be getting a spell for free, no questions asked for the rest of the game unless he hits dream. So, in that way, he's very consistent. And so you can buy the Wither's Familiar, you can buy um, the ranged mage that grows whenever you cast spells, a spell weaver. You can grab those and you'll know that they will grow every single turn. So, on the surface, Loki looks very, like, random and non-consistent. But I think when you dig in a little bit to the synergies of all the pieces and all the characters, that he has a degree of consistency to him that people don't see or that I didn't see for a long while. And that makes playing with him very exciting because you get the flavor of whatever spell you get, but you also have the consistency, like the build-around idea that you'll be getting a spell every single turn. And I like that a lot. Next is Mad Hatter, who, or Mad Catter, rather. I'll put it in B tier, happy tier. Um, I like playing Mad Hatter. I kind of avoid him because he's kind of weird to play. But I wouldn't put it in Mad tier. And this is a similar hero to Loki in the sense that, like, yeah, his effect is a random. But... You, you always know that's going to happen, and you can kind of roll to reduce the RNG. Like, if you're looking for an evil unit, you can roll until, you, until he lands on an evil unit, because it only costs one gold to roll each time. And sometimes free roll lets you do it for free. And you can also just, like, take whatever he buffs and make this hodgepodge team around it. He's a very strange hero. Um, but at the end of the day, you do consistently get access to buffed up creatures. And I think that's why I do like him every now and then. Uh, but in general, I'm less high on him than these characters. I just wouldn't put him in that tier. Uh, probably just the bottom of B tier. Next is the Mask, which I'll put at the top of B tier. Almost an A tier. I really enjoy, like, being able to choose which direction you go in the game. I think that's like a really neat, unique ability. Um, I think it's very strong. I just, I don't know. I, I hover between A tier and B tier. Mask is just like, the versatility is amazing. Sometimes you get screwed because you just don't find any relevant heroes with your spells. But sometimes you find like the perfect one and then you're set. Um, if there was like a tier B.5, <laughs> I'd put him there. Um, but for now, I'll put him at the top of B tier. Maybe I'll change that later. Next is Merlin, who I think is an easy, uh, A tier. Easy A. He's Emma Stone. Um, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, Merlin is just, he's like the opposite of Loki, right? Where instead of consistently having spells every turn, you have consistently have a payoff for spells every turn. Um. Every spell you cast with him is just better than spells without him. And that's like a degree of consistency that I really enjoy. And he can have some busted starts. Like just stat monster creatures as early as turns 2 and 3, just depending on what he draws, right? So Merlin for me is a very fun hero and one that I really enjoy. Next is Miri. Miri, I'm going to put at the high end of meh tier. Um, <sighs> Miri is just such a weird one for me. I used to really enjoy playing as Miri, and I kind of still do. Like, I'm hovering between meh and the bottom of happy tier, B tier, because I tend to do well whenever I play Miri, but the gameplay isn't super engaging. Like, it's just grab princes and princesses, right? It's very RNG-based. Um, if you find the princes and princesses, then you're good to go. If you don't, then you're screwed. So I don't like that. However, I do think 
that Miri is more consistent than you would th imagine at first. Um, I think you just have to prioritize rolling, even when it's a little bit sketchy. And also, one thing is learning when to take non-princes and princesses. Like, particularly at level 4, whenever you hit 4 gold, rather. Um, I think you just need to buy 2 units there, no matter what. Um, just to fill out the board. Because if you spend all your time rolling, looking for princes and princesses, you're just going to get wrecked. So I think there's an art to, like, just finding good creatures to fill in the blanks until you can, like, find all your princes and princesses. And those are, like, the rough games, right? The good games are whenever you don't have to do that and you're, you're just, like, fed princes and princesses because then Miri is, like, an absurd hero. But I think overall I'm going to put it in that tier. I would probably choose most of these other heroes over Miri. Well, maybe. I don't know. Miri is exciting, even though it's a little random. I might move it up to B tier. Because I'm thinking if I see... Mrs. Claus next to Miri. Which one am I picking? I'm actually not sure. I'm definitely picking Miri over Jack's Giant. Probably over Mad Catter. Yeah, I think I think Miri actually works in B tier. Despite the randomness and like... I don't know. Whenever you get Miri going, it's just so fun. So I think I'm going to put Miri there. Next is Mordred, who is a really easy dream target. Um, Mordred does nothing for the first, like, four turns of the game, maybe longer, and I really don't like that. However, he can be very strong in the late game whenever you just have, like, a an eighth body that you need, that, that you had can hold in hand, and then he just slams on the field whenever you get the chance, and that's a very strong effect in the late game, and specifically in the late game, so I like him in Dream Tier, uh, Dream Targets. Next is Morgan who I'm putting in never picking. I don't even think you want to dream in a Morgan. Um, I just, I don't like heroes that incentivize losing health. I just don't think it's very good. Like, if you're winning the game, then you're never triggering her. If you're losing the game, then you're triggering her, but you're on the way down. And I don't know, that just, like whenever you're losing hard, she doesn't do a lot to help you, right? If you hit 20 health when you're at level 3, you only get a level 3 treasure, and that's not very, that's not like game changing, right? But if you're really far ahead, then you're not losing a lot of life, and so she's not doing anything. So I, I don't, I don't like her all that much. Some people might have a different opinion of her, but I never pick her. Next is Muerte. Um, I'm putting Muerte in never picking. This is one that's just, I don't know, I, I've never been able to, like, make a good composition, like, built around, like, it's almost too specific, his ability. Like, the ones up here, they ask you to cast spells, have creatures that make tokens, have good or bad creatures. Like, these are all really easy things to fulfill. This specifically needs last breaths, right? Or am I thinking of, yeah, last breaths. And, I don't know, maybe I'm being too harsh on it, because that's also, I kind of put it together with Trophy Hunter. Both of these require certain abilities, and if you don't get creatures with those abilities, then nothing really happens. Um, I think Muerte is better than Trophy Hunter. So, yeah, I don't know. I'm not, I'm really not sure with these two. All I know is I never want to pick them. Um, and maybe that's just a me thing. I just, like, I don't like the idea of having to build around last breaths. Because, like, you never know what the draft's going to hand you, you know? And you can kind of say that for Geppetto, but Geppetto's payoff is so good. And there's so many summon units that it's not as big as a deal as having to build around last breaths. So, yeah, that's why I'm not huge on these two characters. Sometimes they're good to, like, dream into. Like, I recently had a game where um, I went into Trophy Hunter and I had a really big good boy. And that was really, really good. But I chose to go into Trophy Hunter because I already had the team that would, like, work with him. Versus drafting him first and then, like, trying to force that. So maybe I'll put him in Dream Target tier. 
Because if you have, like, a cool slay comp, not a slay comp, but, like, a good boy comp going on, or a um, copycat comp going on, where you have, like, big last breath creatures in your back line, I think he's very good. So, I'll put him in Dream Dragon tier. Next is Pan's Shadow. I'm gonna slap this in Happy Tier. I don't know what it is. I know it's just a discount, but, like, over the course of the game, I feel like it just nests you so much value. And there are sometimes you just get away with like having a board state that's slightly above where you should be, and I find that pretty appealing. I think it's one of those abilities, it's, it's, it's kind of nuanced in that it's way more strong than it looks on paper. And I, I, I like heroes like that. <clears throat> Next is Peter Pants, who, this might be kind of controversial, I'm putting them in meh tier, because I know Peter Pants can be very strong in the right hands. I just don't think my hands are the right hands. I never have a crazy Peter Pants game, and that's probably on me. And in fact, it probably you know like it is on me, right? It's it's me. It's my play style. It's me not knowing exactly how to play them. Um, I'll pick them from time to time because I do do know that I need to get better at playing them. But for the most part, I'm picking any of these heroes over Peter Pants unless I'm feeling like trying to get better and practicing Peter Pants, you know. Next is Pied Piper, who I will put in the, the top of Met tier. Yeah. Because their new ability is pretty strong. However, sometimes you just end up not doing animal stuff, and then his ability doesn't do anything. And I'm not a big fan of that. I think the early game that Pied Piper has is pretty good. So I think it's worth picking on occasion. Like, I, I, I would never put him in never pick anymore. Before the buff, never picking. Now, eh, I'll pick him sometimes. Uh, next is Potion Master, which I'm going to put right next to Merlin, because they're almost the same thing. Um, Potion Master gives you a lot more versatility, in the sense that you get more spells to choose from. Well, maybe it's not versatility, it's more consistency, right? You get two spells every roll to find one that targets. So that makes actually using his ability a lot easier. Um, so yeah, I really enjoy Potion Master because it has very similar gameplay to Merlin, except, you know, Merlin is letting you get value from all spells, but it's random value. Whereas Potion Master is directly giving you value for specific spells and you get to, but you get more options and you get more chances. It's a little bit, it's not as consistent, but it's more specific because you get to choose where it goes. So I don't know. In my mind, these are both very similar heroes. They're kind of two different flavors of the same idea, and I think they're both very strong. Uh, next is Pup the Magic Dragon, which I am gonna put in that tier. Um, I think they're very strong, like in lower tiers, like whenever you're climbing the ladder up to 3,000. And they're pretty strong with certain units, especially the mummy. And I bring the mummy up a lot. I love the mummy. <laughs> um, but I don't think they're great. Like, Pup is... Like, after level 4, kind of going into level 5, the ability just doesn't do a lot. So it... It's a guaranteed strong early game, kind of like uh, Mrs. Claus and Krampus, but you have to have supports, and that can sometimes be hard to find. Sometimes you run like subpar supports, and I don't know. They're just not a hero I'm very excited to run ever. I think they are stronger than some of these other ones, but uh, for me personally, I don't like playing Pup the Magic Dragon very much. Next up is Sad Dracula, who at one point I think was auto pick but now is in never pick. Uh, they nerfed him hard, and then they nerfed him again. So, I don't know. I just, I don't like playing Dracula anymore. Um, it's way too RNG heavy. If your first character gets attacked, then you, you just don't get any value from him. And I don't like that. So, I don't play Dracula very much anymore. Next is Galahad. Um, I've tried him two or three times on the channel, and I'm consistently underwhelmed. People say he's very good. They say he was very good before the nerf. He got nerfed a little bit. Um, but he's pretty easily in that tier for me. 
Uh, it sounds like some people would put him in B or A, but he, I just do not click with him. He's got the Horde Dragon problem of, like, if you never find treasures, then you are just, like, out of luck. And I'm not a fan of that. Next is Skip, who I'm going to put here in Happy Tier. Skip is very similar to Peter Pants, but Skip has, like, a higher ceiling, I think. And... I don't know, Skip, I, I, I like playing Skip, I was really bad with Skip, and then I made that Reddit post, and I got a lot of good advice, and I, I kind of learned how to play them better, but I just think, I think that Skip is, at least for me, is a better hero. Um, I like that you get to start, you know, ahead of everyone else. And I think that's a neat challenge to kind of pull together because if you're buying like level three units, then your board's not filling out nearly as fast as everyone else's who are buying level two units. So you have to strike that balance, but in exchange, you get like a lot of power. And it's just a really unique and interesting design space. And I like playing as Skip. I will say, I have to be like in the headspace to play as Skip. Like sometimes I just won't pick them because I don't feel like. I don't feel like uh, I'm warmed up enough, or I'm thinking straight enough, or I'm not like distracted. I'm too distracted, maybe, with something else going on. Like, Skip is a hero that I feel like takes more brain power, <laughs> and sometimes I just don't have it in me. So I don't always pick him, but in general, I like Skip, and I'll put him in B tier. Next is Snow Angel, who I will lovingly put on top of C tier, mech tier. Um, I don't know what it is about Snow Angel. I really enjoy playing them. Um, I just don't always get good results with them. I don't know. Like, I could put... Snow Angel's one of those heroes that, like... Sometimes I, I play them, and I'm just, like, having a blast. And then sometimes I just get stomped. Um, so, I don't know. I'm putting them in meta tier. My heart wants to put them in B tier, because I really enjoy playing as them. But realistically, and, like, how they perform for me, I'm probably just going to leave them in C tier. Next is the Cursed King. Very easy, never picking. They're strong. Don't get me wrong. The King is very strong. Getting an extra gold every turn is... It's very... I don't want to say strong again, but... You know, it's, it's, it enables you to do a lot. However, losing two life every turn, or one life, whatever they made it, is rough. And sometimes games come down to like living at one life you know i've won games before because i grabbed a health potion and i went up one life you know like sometimes games are won and lost on those small margins and you just have no control over those margins with uh with the chris king so i do not like playing as him i've tried it once or twice i do not like feeling like i'm always on the downward spiral so this is not a hero that i ever play Next is the Fates, which I will put right next to Snow Angel in Meh tier. Um, again, it's a hero that requires you to get trophies, or treasures, my bad. So, automatically, I'm not very excited to play as them, because I know that I could just get randomly not have any triples. So, I, I put them high on C tier, because when they do go off, they're very strong. And it's actually, I think, a little bit easier to do well with the Fates than it is Horde Dragon or Sir Galahad because the trophy you get doesn't matter a lot. You get the buff for having tripled or upgraded something. So, like, you don't, you don't have to get triples. You can just, you can knighthood something. You can finish a quest. There, there are other ways to get upgraded units, and I think that helps her out a lot. But still, she's very RNG heavy, so I tend not to play as the Fates very often. Next is Wonder Woggle. Wonder Waddle? Wonder Waddle. Who I will put in the bottom of B tier. Just because they again have the issue of like you have to find uh, doubles, but doubles are way easier to find than triples. And the early game for Wonder. Wonder Waddle, <laughs> I can't speak, 
Um, can be very strong. I'm just not super high on them because I feel like Storm of Brawl these days is very much dependent on the late game. And Wonder Waddle's late game isn't, like, amazing. The early game is strong. Sometimes. And that's kind of the thing, right? Like, I know that my early game will always be strong with Mrs. Claus or Krampus. Sorry, my brain stopped working there for a second. Um, so yeah, I know these will always have strong early games. Wonder Waddle might have strong early game, right? Like if you don't find the doubles, which does happen sometimes, then you just kind of don't have a hero. And so I'm not super high on them. But they are a little bit better than, like, Horde Dragon or the Fates, in my opinion. Uh, depending on the day, like, I might choose one of these over Wonder Waddle because they're a little bit more fun, a little bit more exciting. But I think, overall, like, if I'm trying to win an event, I might go with Wonder Waddle. Maybe. Horde Dragon has this weird thing where, like, you can just go in and just try to be as... Just lean into the randomness, and sometimes it works out. So, I don't know, if I was playing against, like, a bunch of really high-ranked people who are obviously much better than me, I might go Horde Dragon just because I might be able to cheese them out, you know? Um, but if we're all on a level playing, on a level playing field, I might go with Wonder Waddle. Wonder Waddle. Ugh, I keep messing that up. Um, next is Jelwa, who I am going to put in Dream Targets. Terrible early game, basically doesn't exist until level 4, at which point they become very strong. So I like them as a dream target, not very much as a hero. Then there's the Headless Horseman, who I will put eh, about here in Happy Tier, B Tier. Um, I think Kidnapping is actually pretty good and can really give you a boost in the early game and even kind of the mid game. And if you can hold on to one for the late game, you can get like, some really busted creatures off your opponents. Um, but one cool thing about them, and what I really like, is that they set you up for a dream. Eventually, at some point in the game, you'll probably find a it was all of the, all it was all a dream. And if you've used the um, kidnaps, then you're like set just to take that and find a new hero. And I kind of like that about them. Uh, the same thing with uh, this hero whose name I am forgetting for some reason, the knighthood hero. Um, yeah, they, they have the same thing where, like, you can spin their spell and then dream into something else. And I think that's fun. I think it's, uh, like, a valid strategy that I like doing from time to time. And the actual kidnaps themselves can be very strong tempo plays. So I, I like Headless Horseman. I should play as him more often. Um, I don't play as him a, a lot because... I'm not entirely sure when I need to use the kidnaps, but um, I do think he's a pretty strong hero. And then finally, we have Apocalypse, who at this point in time, for me, A tier, auto pick. If he's in your lobby, like you, if you if you have the option to play as Apocalypse, I think you need to play as Apocalypse, and then put getting XP above almost anything else. You want to play very safe. And you want to get all the bonus XP that you can. Because whenever you hit level 6, if you hit above, like, if you hit it before anyone else does, then you are in, like, a wild spot. Like, Apocalypse is just an absurd hero. Um, there's also some degree of him being a good dream target. But I think, at this point in time, he's the only auto-pick. Um, I think you can make plenty of arguments for these A tier heroes to be auto picks um well maybe none of these are as strong as apocalypse in my opinion like nothing in A or below is nearly as strong as he is um grandmother comes close whenever she turns into the wolf but it's just not nearly as strong as like just getting a whole board of sixes he is just so strong um and challenging to play because you really need to like play defensively you're not trying to make these aggressive tempo plays as much as you're trying just to make sure that you preserve health 
Um, so yeah, this is about where I would put things. Um, I don't think I want to change anything looking back on it. These are definitely my favorite heroes. It's top two tiers. Like I, I really just enjoy playing as all of these. So uh, thank you guys for watching. Let me know in the comments if you agree, disagree with any of these placements. If I'm just like dumb and I'm missing something on some of these heroes. Um, so yeah, let me know. Uh, this has been really fun. I'm going to try to do more like content like this going forward. Um, that's not so much gameplay, but uh, tier lists and rankings and, you know, just other fun stuff. Uh, I, I like doing this stuff. I like talking about my hobbies. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a big hobby person. And <laughs> not everyone's into the same hobbies as me, so this is a good outlet. And so I'll probably make more videos like this in the future. Uh, let me know what you want to see. Uh, I, I believe in, like, constant communication. I think communication is a great way to forge relationships and keep relationships strong. So uh, just let me know in the comments what you want to see, what I can do to improve, what you like, what you don't like. Uh, just to say, hey, <laughs> I'll probably respond because I like it whenever people engage. Um, so, yeah. Anyway, this is my tier list. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you next time.